Welcome to TensorFlow Object Detection CAPTCHA Solver Tutorial. This is the first introduction part. I would like to say at first sorry because my voice can be a little different because I'm not feeling very good right now. I'm a little sick. So uh, I would like sorry and I'll begin the tutorial. Beginning with CAPTCHAs, people on the internet are more or less familiar with the term CAPTCHAs. Use annoying images that contain text you have to type in before you can access a website. So, CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computer and Human Apart. The main purpose of CAPTCHA is to prevent automated stuff on the internet with bots, in other words saying, that's a test used in computing to determine whether or not the user is a human. So, CAPTCHA is just a text with noises, different colors, with rotated symbols or different way change it to make it harder for a computer to recognize it. Sometimes, even for a human, it's hard to recognize what is written on the image. So, it's quite a difficult task to make bots who could break these images. So, if you are watching or listening this video, this tutorial, you probably know that no matter how hard CAPTCHA is, it's already possible to solve them with rise of deep learning and computer vision. But probably you don't know how to do that, so keep watching or keep reading my tutorial. No matter how much CAPTCHA evolves, there always will be people who come with methods to break it. One of the most famous methods is to use machine learning approach. And our main focus is going to be a specific type of using neural network called convolutional neural networks. Convolutional neural networks work similar to how our brain are able to recognize things and differentiate one object from another. Uh, to provide a better intuition, uh, you can look at this picture below and you can immediately tell that these two animals are not the same species. But you will ask how? Just how? And as, uh, your answer will be, that's obvious. <laughs> Why are you asking? So it comes from the fact that we have seen possibly a million pictures of dogs, cats and other animals, as well as seen them in real life. When we were kids, we were told that they are different. Then our brain slowly understood that the distinctions between these two animals. Our memories gives us a capability to correctly recognize which one is dog and which one is a cat by seeing many differences between them. Using the same concept, we are going to do the same for our capture detection neural network. Well, not exactly the same because our computer does not perceive the picture the same as we do. They see bunches of symbols that indicate an intensity of color on that particular pixel. If we have an RGB image, one of the ways to display them is an array in RGB. Layers in convolutional neural network are special as they are organized in three dimensions, width, height and depth. This fact allows us to feed a picture to the network. The final layer which is a fully connected layer would tell us what our convolutional network predicts. So to make everything more clear, there is an example of photo what and here it is. There's will be an example of photo what we see and what a computer sees. We as a human in this photo see a dog, puppy. If we would like to see picture in a computer way we might use the simple script on this image. And here's the short script. I'm not writing it right now, but I'll post it in a text version. So we take the same picture as it was below as puppy GP, JPEG, and we get all the pixel data from it. And we can simply print it on our Python shell and we'll receive a bunch of symbols. This is, as you can see, it's many, many, many arrays as a list, and it represents every pixel in this photo before, and as RGB value. 
So what's next? Now you understood how we see and how computer sees the uh, the same image and what is the difference. So what we can do with this data? So that's a computer. We need to process it the same way as we do it on our brain, but we do it more automatically. So now that we have a basic understanding of what convolutional neural network do, we'll use this method to break down, capture, and see how accurate we can solve it. We'll use recurrent neural network with previous tutorial when I try to detect Counter-Strike uh, shooting game enemies and shoot them. So I can post it on my text version tutorial or you can scroll my website to check this out or my uh, YouTube tutorial. So I'm creating a structured model to break down CAPTCHA. Let's look at the CAPTCHA image and let's assume that our CAPTCHA will come in a combination of 26 English alphabets and nine numerical symbols from zero to nine. I mean, uh, at the end, our method will be able to solve CAPTCHA with different amount of symbols. So to use any machine learning system, we need to collect training data to break a CAPTCHA system. So we want train a model that works like this, that we give, give them a CAPTCHA, for example, with five symbols, and as answer, we receive correct answer. So this is the mission. When we'll have our training data, we could use it to train our conventional neural network. That would look like this. Between them is our convolutional network. We give cape capture image to it, and uh, our network gives us an answer. But not, that's not the final model we need. With enough training data collected, our approach must work, uh, but we can make the problem even simpler to solve. The simpler the problem, the less training data and less computational power and time we'll need to solve it. We know that. Capture images are always made up of some amount of separated symbols. If we could somehow split the image apart so that each letter would be a separate image, then we only need to train the neural network to recognize a single letter at a time. So then our our model would look like this: that we give a we take a capture image. From that capture image, we take each letter and we give it to our convolutional network and at the end we'll give for example five letters to our convolutional neural network and as a result we'll receive five correct answers so what we'll do so we are going to train our convolutional network to detect a single letter from catch and not full string from it at a time this way will need way less training data and I will talk more about training that data in second tutorial for now this is the result we would expect to get this so from this image you can see that we'll give uh, our capture image to train a convolutional neural network and as output it gives us another capture image with detections but detections are not always 100% accurate. This detection percent depends on training data we use. Moreover, our convolutional neural network might detect even more symbols than there is on capture image. To solve this problem, we must use some kind of filter. As you can see that from our convolutional network detection image, our model saw that the AI as 60% instead of letter T, but after using some kind of filter, we still receive T. So we'll talk about that and about developing, developing the filter in the last capture detection tutorials. I think that I talked quite enough about that. That is quite a short introduction, more quite uh, informative and not too long. And as a conclusion, uh, I would say that 
As I was searching for other out-of-the-box CAPTCHA solving models, I couldn't find them that I could download, uh, insert it to my code and use it. No, 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 that's not that simple. So I decided to make one by myself. And when I'll finish this tutorial series, you'll be able to download full code and if you have all TensorFlow libraries on your computer working, then you will be able to give capture to this model and receive the result. You don't need any GPU, but you need to have a CPU which supports TensorFlow. So, I think that will be it for this part. I believe we have a good understanding of what our approach is. Next, we'll be working with our capture image dataset and training our convolutional neural network using TensorFlow. I will go through step by step that everyone could train his own catch, breaking module, or simply use my out of the box model. So, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave in comment section below this video. And of course, if you liked my video, smash up the like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you all for watching. Good luck and see you in the next video.